Hello and welcome to the Currency Blog. Um, this is for the uh, week of the 6th of March. And what we're going to deal with uh, this week is a series of questions that are all to do with uh, stop losses and uh, to a certain extent risk management. First question uh, comes from another great name, Muhammad Ali. We get one every week. And what he's saying is the he sees an alarming number of folk who don't manage their risk by using stop losses. And is there any particular reason why? Well, I think there is. Um, there's a lot of conflicting advice out there in books and whatever about um, not only whether you should use stops or whether you shouldn't, but also what, it, what they should be and how much you should uh, risk. What tends to happen, we've talked about over leverage in previous weeks, and I think over leverage in a small account means that it's very easy to be stopped out very quickly. And so stop losses um, tend to be too close. So what happens is you get picked off, um, the market then goes back to where you get in, or it starts going in your favour if you still had the position. And so what happens is next time you trade, you say, well, you know, I'm not, I got picked off last time, I'm not going to use a stop. And of course, at that time, then the position then um, steadily gets worse. It doesn't come back to you. And so you end up with a big loss. So normally it's to do with the fact that your initial use of stops um, is not quantified well enough and they're too tired. Um, this leads us into the next question, which is, is there any strategy for setting stop losses on the Australian dollar or the euro dollar? Um, in fact, this, this came from Angela uh, Deng. Um, it doesn't really matter what market it is. Um, there is a very simple way of setting stop losses and also using the same methodology for trailing stops. And what this is, is to use what's called swing patterns or sometimes referred to as fractals. Now, for me, a fractal or a swing pattern is a five bar pattern and it means that the middle bar of five is either the lowest point or the highest point. So if it's the highest point, it's, it's going to be uh, above the market normally. Uh, and if it's the lowest point, then it's slightly below the, uh, the market. So if I have a buy signal for whatever reason, if I'm looking at somewhere to put the stop in, I can say that if price trades below the previous swing low, so the previous five bar low pan, that's where I'm going to put my stop. Now it could be in some instances where we trend that that's too far away, it could be 100 points away or whatever. In which case, as far as I'm concerned, I've got to use some sort of other methodology, but if you're just going to use swing patterns, you've probably just got to leave the trade alone and not do it. Um, you've got also two choices. You can either put the stop um, immediately in and just say if, it's, if it triggers below it just by a couple of ticks, I'm out. Or you can wait for price to close below the swing pattern. Um, personally, I prefer the latter, um, but it's a, a judgment choice. One thing that you have to be careful with that is periods of inactivity. If the market's not doing anything, then it creates swing patterns that are extremely close to the market. Um, there are ways around that. In my book in Chapter 5, I look at ways that you can multiply range of swing patterns, but that's probably a little bit too sophisticated for most software. Um, if it is very, very tight, then look at the, the last significant swing pattern that you have. Now let's say that your trade is making money and you're in a trending market, then what will happen is the middle bar of five uh, will form higher and higher swing patterns as the trend develops. And so what you can do is trail your stop. If price closes below that swing pattern, you no longer have permission to be in that trade. So pretty simple rule there. The next question is, um, is there a, a best settings for setting stop losses um, on the euro dollar? I'm looking at a 30 minute chart. Well, yes, there is. There's quite a few things that you can do there. Um, you could use those swing patterns, um, what I've just exp explained. But the problem with that is it's depending what time of day that you're actually getting your signals and what you're trading. Um, judging by P.O. Ung C's name, she may well be in Asia, in which case the euro dollar is not moving a great deal in her time zone. And so um, the normalised limit of range at that time of day um, can vary wildly from what it would be in the afternoon, say, in America. Now what I do is I use uh, something again uh, from my book called Volatility Time Bands. And on a 30 minute chart what they do is they say what is the normalised range uh, in this 30 minute period for this time of day over the last 20 days. And then what it does is it takes, uh, well, as soon as that bar opens, it places one, two and three symmetrical standard deviations around that opening. Two things this means. First of all, because it's through the opening, I'm not getting worried about my indicator moving around all over the place as the market moves. It's got a fixed value, so it has um, predictive uh, qualities and fixed qualities so that I know where I am, however volatile the market is. The second thing is that 
I'm interested in the absolute limit of those ranges, so the third deviation either side. And I'm just going to, I've just got a chart up here on my other computer, and I'm just going to give you the difference um, between what it can be at certain times of day. So at um, 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, London time, the limit of range on euro dollar on a 30 minute chart is 24 ticks. And then if I go to when the American stock market opens at 2.30 London time, then I'm all the way out at 90 ticks. So, different times of day means your risk is, is wildly different. But the, your indicators, whatever your choice of entry, um, normally isn't dictated by the time of day, if you're, especially if you're using momentum indicators. Remember that it doesn't mean that I'm putting a 90 tick stop in because it's really 45 ticks either side of that opening price. And so, if price goes beyond say 50 ticks, um, it's telling me that I'm doing something out of the ordinary and so um, that would give me an idea of my risk for that time of day. The other thing that this can lead into um, is connection with supports and resistances. I use market profile to build supports and resistances uh, based on again to do with time, lots of time, periods of time, periods where time changes and normally in that analysis um, whatever the pair doesn't really matter. It typically gives you a stop of around 40 to 50 points. So um, there are times when it's a little bit broader in area of support and resistance and there's issues to do with how you scale into a position and the stop can be a little bit wider at those times. But as a general rule that's how it works. For my own technical commentaries that I write on foreign exchange where I put trade recommendations in, they're deemed to have failed automatically if price goes 40 points against you. So that's how I look at it. And price has had to have gone at least 50 points in your favour to say that the trade was a winner. Um, the people who subscribe, they have all different ways of, of taking their profits, and some of them are short-term traders, some of them are strategic ones. This leads me into a, the final part, which is a, um, a subject that's not very often very well known. And what it's called is uh, maximum adverse excursion. And this is a statistic that was created by a guy... John Sweeney, if I remember rightly, um, and what he did was to say, okay, whenever you put your entry in, whatever it is, whatever the market is, um, at what point that it goes a certain amount against you, is statistically, is it getting to the point where it's not going to turn back into a winner? And for sophisticated traders and people with uh, programs like MATLAB connected to CQG, where you can download data and do tests on lots of uh, portfolios of data, this can give you statistics associated with that fact and I've done a lot of tests in that over the years on a variety of markets and so I know that on a day trade basis um, once a position, so in Euro dollars, goes 50 points against me the probability that it's actually going to be a winner by just one tick is actually down in the 10 to 15 percent chance and of course the later in the day that it's 50 points against me that statistic goes down even more this is extremely useful because at, at some point I have to say to myself, what am I still doing in this losing trade? Statistically, I know that there's not a great deal of chance of this becoming a winner today. Um, tomorrow is another day. I want to live to fight another day. And so really I should just get out of the position. So um, statistics like that can help you and give you the discipline to say, you know what, I'm 40, 50 points wrong. Let's just get out. Tomorrow's another day. We haven't lost our shirt and we're can uh, reanalyze the market again tomorrow. Okay, that's it for this week.